Karen Virgil, Creative Katie here, and welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Today we have a mixed media canvas tutorial. Actually, this is one of the ones that I thought I lost the video to, and I just refound it. It's called Love Lives Here. It's one of my favorite all time canvases. Links to the supplies I use can be found in the description box below. Thank you for shopping through my Amazon links. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the option to be notified as soon as I upload new videos. So I started off and I have a 11 by 14 canvas and a whole bunch of collage items. Now most of these are gel printed papers that I've made in various stints that I pulled out of my red slash orange folder and I kind of knew that I wanted to stay in that color. Some of these are done on copy paper, some are done on tissue paper, deli papers, different book papers. They're different weights and I look for that. I want some different sizes, some different patterns and I'm just kind of looking and seeing what looks good to me. Now you might notice on the canvas I have it partitioned off into four sections because I have a plan where I'm going to basically have basically four mini canvases on a this bigger canvas that works as one. So I also have some dictionary papers here and I think later on I'll be adding some doilies. I'm just applying this with gel medium but you can also use Mod Podge at this stage and I've done both quite successfully. Whatever I use, I do do use a matte finish at this stage. And there's there's the doilies, and that adds some interesting texture. I always like when I use it, and I I need to use it more. So I want to leave a little bit of white space because the, a lot is going to be added into the background of this mixed media canvas. But I want interest in the way of color and pattern and also some texture. And that's why you see me layering two collage papers on top of each other. If you have scrap old scrapbook book pages, that could be used on here as well. Um, you know, magazine sheets, you can rip them out and they're just the colored portions. People have used those successfully. So I don't think you need to go out and buy a gel, gel plate, although I absolutely love mine. It's one of my favorite things to do. So now using some archival black, I'm just stamping different patterns. I use some a circle stamp and from Carabelle Studios and now my this script stamp that is my most loved stamp. And since I don't know if this is going to be framed, I am finishing off the sides. So I am going to put some of the stamping and the color. I'm going to wrap it around. This stamp is another one of my favorites. I love the dark dots. You get that contrast. This is a, a uh, shelf liner. And I love the pattern of this one. I'm just trying to work with pattern and go from there. Then I decided I'm going to use some of my archival ink in, in the burgundy color. And that's just going to show up a little different than the black. Now here I decide I'm going to use this bronze um, Liquitex uh, acrylic ink. And I try to drip it, but it's not really giving me the effect that I like. So you're going to see me wiping this off and um, starting over. So now I'm just going to use regular acrylic paint that I'm going to water down. And I'm going to get some of that drippage effect. This is a salmon colored paint and... I absolutely love this color. This one is just Americana paint, craft paint. I'm trying really hard not to get rid of the color that's in the gel prints and or get rid of all the white space. So now I'm just applying some with my palette knife. 
that's a relatively new thing for me. But it does give a different effect, and so I like that. This is a dark, mm, I can't think what the name is, something violet. And it's it's like a dark burgundy-ish brown. And I didn't like it with the palette knife, so I'm just kind of mixing it up with a little bit of water and, and diluting it a bit. It was too too dark in my mind. But I'm trying to add darks and lights. So here I'm adding deep violet. Now it seems like an odd color combination in here, although what I'm applying here, which I learned quite by accident in another video, is if you mix that salmon color with this deep violet, you get this absolutely gorgeous pink rose color that I just, I love. So this is a crafter's workshop, stencil art is, and I'm going in with the that um, deep violet. It's not dark enough, so I just quickly get rid of it, and then I grab my Payne's Gray, which is a blue-gray, and I'm putting the script stamp through that. And I don't want it all over. I want it here and there. I find that Payne's Gray works really well, especially if you don't want the starkness of the black. I thought the black might overpower the back, the colors that I had here. This art is stencil. It was one of my first stencils that I that I purchased. So now I want to relocate my um, four quadrants. And I'm just drawing the line on with a white watercolor pencil. And the reason for that is I can get rid of it. I can take a baby wipe and wipe it off after the fact. But I want a kind of an idea of where my quadrants, where the border lines are. So this is another Crafters Workshop stencil, one of my absolute favorites. And I'm putting modeling paste through it, and I'm applying with a credit card. And, you know, I'm tidying up a little bit, but it really doesn't matter. And actually, those little bits that somehow escape where, you, you know, the being perfectly lined up are some of my favorite things. I just want each one to have, be a little bit different and a little bit... Um, unique, each quadrant. It's a little bit tricky to, to do videos when I do a canvas that's 11 by 14. Um, there's just not that much room on my table with the camera and the tripod and, and everything. Now I'm just applying gold with a very expensive mark making tool, the lid of something. My husband now knows that uh, any lid goes into another container and that ends up in my studio. So I have all different shapes and sizes. And then I'm splattering with the leftover gold. So now I'm applying some of the color onto the texture paste. And I did not put a coat of gesso or anything on this. And the reason is it takes the paint a little bit differently. So there I'm showing that deep violet and that salmon color. And they are luscious together. So I'm just kind of mixing it in. There, I've got it diluted a little bit. I'm just rubbing it in with my fingers. I'm not too concerned if there's some areas that are lighter and darker. In fact, that's what I want.
I'm just playing with the colors till I like what I see. Removing some with the baby wipe, just back and forth and back and forth. Just making sure I've got color on the sides. And giving this some dry time. Lots of interest, lots of texture on this, lots of pattern. I'm loving it. So now I'm getting out the white and I'm going to add some details with the white. That didn't work. So I'm going to put it on where well, here I'm using a cardboard and I just do it both two different directions and I kind of get that crosshatch look. And the white is going to lighten up the canvas a little bit. And if you put it somehow and it smudges or it doesn't look like what you wanted to, you do have a few minutes to take a baby wipe and get it off, as long as what's underneath is dry. So I need some, I want some of these white dots. And I absolutely, right here, when this app went on there, it just, in my mind, transformed this piece. It just made it. Adding that white just really, really set off this background. So I'm adding some more of the gold because with layers of paint on top, some of the gold got pushed back too much and I just want that little bit of bling. There's a good picture of, of it. And now I have some hearts that I've cut out and have templates for. And I just want to arrange the hearts in different ways in each quadrant. So I just play around and I've played off camera. That's what you saw me bring up the camera because I took pictures of several different ones and I looked back at the pictures to decide which one I liked. But I, I do want everyone to look different. So I'm taking my Stabilo All Pencil in white, but you can use a watercolor pencil. And just tracing these hearts. And having templates like this is a good thing to have in your stash. And please check out my Build Your Stash video series where I talk about all the things you can do kind of that help speed along the creative process that you can do ahead of time and just have in your stash ready to go. So now I'm using the float floating technique, floating acrylic technique, and you with white paint and an angle brush. And I'm just kind of basically shading or highlighting around the hearts in the white. And this is something, you know, I learned how to do when I did folk art painting and painting on wood. And it's a technique that I have utilized a lot within my mixed media. Now, if you don't have that, you can use the Stabilo All Pencil and activate it with the brush or watercolor pencil. The only thing is those products aren't permanent, so you're going to have to spray them and be um, aware that if you put anything wet on top, including varnish, it may activate them. 
So now I'm using the burgundy color and just highlighting and shading the darker color in here to kind of show off the four quadrants. I don't want to lose that line. And I'm shading it around there. In the end, this ended up getting framed. Um, in a wood canvas frame. So you didn't see the sides. Um, that's how it, how it sold or whatever. But this could be hung without a frame. And I'm just building up the color to get to the intensity that I want. Just a little more shading around the corner just by applying the acrylic paint with a blending tool. Getting the edges. And now I'm using a charcoal pencil, a woodless charcoal pencil, and just shading a little bit to get with the black just to add a little bit more definition. As I said in the beginning, this is one of my most favorite projects that I've done. And it, it was one that hung in the gallery and it had sold. So I'm sad because I loved it and I would have been quite happy to have this hanging in my home, but I'm sure that it is, has found a lovely new home. I just have to follow my video now and create another one. But when it comes to mixed media, I mean, I can follow all the same, very similar steps, but I can never totally duplicate this. So my mixed media pieces truly are, you know, one of a kind. There was a heart here that I did not trace, end up highlighting, got forgotten. So I'm just going back and catching it. And just adding a little bit of dark on the outside just to make it pop because it's kind of disappeared there. So you're adding lights and darks just so it looks till it looks like what you want it to look. And I grab the fine liner bottle and I just outline very sketchily with the bottle around the hearts in the black. And I chose to use black because it, I don't show this on camera, but I do add the term love lives here in the bottom left hand quadrant. And that's in black. Um, or white cardstock that I do paint black. 
but you'll see that in the pictures at the end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you love this canvas as much as I do. Bye.